All right, let's talk about heart murmurs in this video over here, and let's make it really easy and a lot of fun. Here we have this heart over here. Let's beat this heart now and listen to the normal heart sounds. These normal heart sounds, which are described as lub-dub, represent S1 and S2. Let's explain what S1 and S2 is all about. We take a look over here at the tricuspid valve and the mitral valve, and they're open. Now they're closed, and now they're open. And again, now they're closed, and now they're open. Why do they open? Of course, because we want to fill the ventricles with blood. They close when they're finished filling the ventricles with blood. And it is this closing which is the source of the S1 sound. Again, the S1 sound represents the tricuspid valve and mitral valve's closing. So this is what the S1 is all about, and that's what the lub is all about. Now let's talk about S2. So over here we see that the aortic valve and pulmonic valve are open. Now they're closed, and now they're open, because we want to push blood out of the heart to the pulmonary and systemic circulation. But when they close, that is the source of S2. Again, S2 represents the closure of the aortic and the pulmonic valves. Now before we start talking about stenosis and regurgitation, let's just talk about S3 and S4. These are sounds that we don't always find. S3 we sometimes find in children, and in young athletes or in pregnant women, or in patients with various conditions. And it represents rapid ventricular filling, from the left atrium to the left ventricle. And this is what it sounds like. There's this subtle ub de dub Let's hear it again. This is heard right after S2. In fact, it occurs about 0.1 seconds after S2. And as for S4, this is even more rare. And this is seen in conditions like restrictive cardiomyopathy, where there's reduced compliance of the ventricles. All right, now let's start talking more about pathology. We're gonna talk about stenosis and regurgitation. Let's begin with aortic stenosis. That's of course when there's a blockage in the aortic valve and blood can't properly get from the left ventricle through the aorta. What's gonna happen then is that there's going to be hypertrophy of the left ventricle because it's working so hard to push through the narrowed valve. Now, what is this gonna sound like? Well, since we're trying to push blood through this narrowed valve over here, it's gonna have a crescendo, decrescendo ejection murmur. That's gonna get louder at first and then quieter. This reflects the changing speed in the blood as it is ejected through the valve. Now, of course, this is only going to occur during systole. Systole is when we're pushing blood through the valve. So again, what we're gonna have is a crescendo, decrescendo murmur during systole. And this is what it looks like. Let's just mention a few associations with aortic stenosis. First, it, it radiates to the carotids, and that's because of the turbulent flow that even makes its way to the neck. The other thing that we wanna know about aortic stenosis is the cause. And it's actually most of the time due to age-related calcifications, especially in patients older than 60. In younger patients, it's most commonly due to early onset calcification of a bicuspid aortic valve. What do we see in patients with aortic stenosis? Well, blood's not getting to the brain properly, so it could lead to syncope. We also see angina, and that's because the heart is working so hard to push against the stenotic valve, but we don't have enough supply, so that causes chest pain. All right, now let's move on to aortic regurgitation. In aortic regurgitation, we see a weakening of the aortic valve, so there's backflow, so the murmur will be heard during diastole, and this is what it sounds like. It's described as an early diastolic decrescendo blowing murmur. And causes of aortic regurgitation can be remembered with the mnemonic BEAR. B for bicuspid aortic valve, E for endocarditis, A for aortic root dilation, and R for rheumatic fever. And it can progress to left heart failure. All right, now let's move on to mitral stenosis. Mitral stenosis is when the mitral valve over here is stenotic. It's narrowed. What happens if there's a narrowed mitral valve? Blood can't properly go from the left atrium to the left ventricle during filling, during diastole. And that's why the murmur occurs during diastole. And this is what it sounds like. We notice that there's a rumbling sound. That's how it's described, a rumbling sound. And that's because as blood tries to get into the left ventricle to fill it up, it rumbles its way through. We notice the opening snap over here. This represents the abrupt halt in the leaflet motion in diastole after the rapid opening. An important association that we want to know is that chronic mitral stenosis can result in left atrial dilation. And that's because the left atrium constantly has more blood in it than it should. And so over time, it begins to expand. Mitral stenosis can also lead to pulmonary congestion. 
And that makes sense. We don't have enough room for the blood from the lungs to get to the left atrium, because the left atrium hasn't properly emptied. And finally, mitral stenosis is associated with atrial fibrillation. And that's because as the left atrium struggles to get its blood out, it causes electrical disturbances. Now let's talk about mitral regurgitation. So here we have the mitral valve, and here it's open. Now, let's say we close it. We want it to stay closed, because we don't want any blood to flow from the left ventricle to the left atrium. The problem in mitral regurgitation is that blood does flow. Blood flows from the left ventricle to the left atrium, when it's not supposed to. This, of course, is not during filling, it's during contraction. So this is a systolic problem. That's why, if we listen to the sounds, there's a high velocity murmur heard during systole. In fact, it's described as a hollow systolic murmur. Now, in mitral regurgitation, this sound is heard best at the apex, whereas in tricuspid regurgitation, it's heard loudest at the tricuspid area. Now let's talk about causes, ischemic heart disease, as well as connective tissue diseases, such as Marfan syndrome or Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, as well as rheumatic fever. Tricuspid regurgitation is often due to right ventricular dilatation. Either of them could be caused by infected endocarditis. All right, let's just end off this scene over here with a quick word about two more murmurs. Ventricular septal defect is when there's a passageway between the ventricles. This results in a hollow systolic, harsh sounding murmur that sounds like this. Now, prolapse is another condition that we need to be aware of, because it's actually pretty common. Now, it's usually benign, but it can predispose a patient to infective endocarditis. In mitral valve prolapse, we hear a murmur during systole, but in late systole, it's a late crescendo murmur with a mid systolic click. This click is due to the sudden tensing of the chordae tendinae as the mitral leaflets prolapse into the left atrium. And this mitral valve prolapse is best heard over the apex of the heart. And as you can see over here, it's loudest just before S2. All right, I hope you enjoyed this scene on heart murmurs. Take care.